silverware lifted uh, by Lazio. Entertaining way to head into the, uh, the winter break. Yeah, right so now. in the last week, we've seen Milan's most embarrassing game of the decade. We've seen Cristiano Ronaldo defy gravity by levitating at the apex of his jump. And we've seen Lazio potentially joining the Scudetto race. And it's mm. going to make for a lot of really good storylines in the second half of the season. Mm. Talking of that race, Matteo, let's look at the Serie A title odds as they stand at the moment. Juventus, according to the odds makers, still very much firm favourites. You can get two to five on on them winning a ninth consecutive Scudetto. Inter at five to two. You mentioned Lazio. They're there or thereabouts at 15 to one. And then it's uh, take the field, Atalanta and Roma at 40 to one. It, it, it really has been the decade of Juventus. Matteo, is this the year where it's going to be different? Do we genuinely have a title race? We've seen Juve pushed a few of these seasons by Napoli. Then some other seasons we see the Scudetto race ending in December. This is not going to be one of those years. I think this is the year where we see two teams potentially fighting alongside Juve. Mm. Juve have every right to be the favorites because we haven't been proven otherwise in the last eight single seasons, which right. is just absolutely incredible to have this dynasty right now in this day and age with all the money floating around, especially now with all these teams that are spending big like Milan, like Inter. But so far, no one's proven that they are better than Juve. But I have the feeling that this is the campaign where things can change because of what Inter's been able to do in the market, because of the continuity that we've seen from Lazio as well, a team that no one was talking about before the start of the season to get to this point. So you're picking Inter. <laughs> I'm picking Juventus until we can other ones. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm until no Inter wins it. Here. Just to clarify, Gab, uh, do we have a race? I mean, Juventus have been here before. They've been behind at this stage of the, uh, the season before in their eight consecutive years of winning the title. Is this the year where it's going to be different? Yeah, look, I mean, I never quite get this point when people are like, oh, well, but, you know, in the past. Well, the, that's the thing about the old days. They're the old days. Different players, different managers. This is a different season this year, and um, I think we have not just a two-horse race, but we could very well have a three-horse race, as Matteo said. Lazio have a game in hand. I believe it's against Verona, if I'm not mistaken. And Lazio also have the impetus of no more European football the rest of the year. And we've seen in the past how that's really had an influence, especially uh, in, in Serie A and teams that, that do well. So, no, I'm, I'm leaning Inter at this point very, very gradually. Um, because I think Juventus really want to win the Champions League and because I think they have a whole bunch of unanswered questions. Uh, so I don't think this Juve team can be compared uh, to, to the lot more settled Juve uh, that we saw in the past under Allegri and, uh, and under Antonio Conte. What are your suspicions, Ali, about who will be holding the Scudetto mm. aloft come, come May? See, what I find is when we get into the sort of discussions about Juventus and potentially who is going to be the team that, it, that is going to win the title, we try to find reasons as to why Juventus is not going to win it. Right. And, and we start talking about last year, we start talking about Inter, and well, Juventus is going to focus on Champions League. Well, you know, guess what? Inter is, not cha is focusing on Champions League because they're not in Champions League anymore. <laughs> and there is a reason to that. So they are vulnerable as well. And so... There are a multitude of reasons as to why you could say, well, Juventus is having this issues, having that issues, having this problem. They're not quite what they used to be, and yet they continue mm. to win games. It's ugly. It's not great. You, you, you do this. You say that. And Ronaldo scores a goal. And Divala scores a goal. And they win one nothing. And we move on with three points. You have that certainty with Juventus that you don't have with anybody else coming from behind. Are you betting against the streak, Shaka? Um, I'd... I'd like to. And, and to, to, uh, to explain that, earlier this week we were talking about the, the Bundesliga race and I said, my head says Bayern, but my heart says Leipzig or, or, or Mönchengladbach. Similarly in Syria, uh, my head is saying Juventus, but I would really like to see Inter or Lazio, I, I have more thinking it'll be, it'll be Inter, go on and win it. Mm. Um, given who they have, given who they have on the sidelines, I think this is as good a team we've seen with the potential of setting Juventus. I hope it happens. We thought it'd be very revealing, Matteo, if you would give us your uh, Serie A mid-season starting 11. Yeah, so the big omission is Ronaldo, and that's because I think he's actually going to have a better second half of the season. Mm. Yet yeah, that's like <laughs> Controversy! Oh, well, La right. La La we we get to that in a minute. Lautaro and Lukaku have been the difference between Inter fighting for fourth place and now competing 
for the Scudetto. I think they finished the season with over 40 goals between the two. Immobile right now, the Capo Cannoniere. In the midfield, Josep Ilicic having his best season of his life. He's doing things that are absolutely world class. Almost on a regular basis now, I think Nainggolan's been spurned by the new move to Cagliari. Luis Alberto, 11 assists on the season. Surprise inclusion with Teo Hernandez, but the Milan Ooh. fullback has been their best player, and that's never a good sign when your left back is your best attacking player. In the center of the park, though, Acerbi, long veteran of Serie A, playing very well with Lazio, and Chris Smalling came with very little fanfare, and I thought he was brilliant. Gab, we uh, gave you the same chance. Your mid-season 11. Only three players the same as uh, Mateo's, I should point out. Yeah, although um, I got to say, I wimped out on Cristiano. He really shouldn't be there. And I admire Mateo's young buck uh, courage in leaving Cristiano <laughs> out. Uh, Is that what you call it? <laughs> I would have had Lukaku. I would have had Lukaku in there for, for Cristiano. Um, no, I mean, I, I guess I view things a little bit differently. I think Brozovic has really been overlooked uh, for Inter because all the focus has been on the people who are out. He's played almost every minute of every game. He's run more than anybody. And they're top of the table. Um, Smalling or Mancini for me is kind of a toss-up uh, at the back. Uh, I agree on, on Teo, definitely. Um, so, and then I had to reward Papu Gomez because he's, you know, you can argue is Ilicic better, blah, 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 but Papu Gomez is the symbol to me of this Atalanta team. Hmm. So Teo Hernandez, Luis Alberto and Chiro Immobile, the only players you had to in, in, in common there. Yeah, let, let me just say, Ronaldo won't be happy here. <laughs> no, he won't. This is a yeah. this is a super Copa take my medal off, yep. refuse to shake anybody's hands kind of mm -hmm. moment coming. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.